So, hello, Gearslots. It's Jan reporting from the Super Booth, and I'm here with Hugo from 4MS. And um, he's got a um, couple of really cool modules. Uh, I'll give him the mic. Hi, hi, uh, Hugo Ferris here at Super Booth with 4MS Company. Hello, Gearslots. Uh, I'm going to be showing uh, the new spherical wave table navigator by 4MS, uh, starting with a jam and then uh, checking out some sounds and features. So, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, that was just this one, the spherical wave table navigator we're listening to. And then it was going through a, a 4MS DLD, dual looping delay. And this one was also clocking uh, a peg and clocking a QCD for the sequence that was going into the STS. And then the STS going into the typographic delay for a little bit of effect. But the main sound was this one and then the STS doing that rhythm we heard, that little upbeat reggae type of rhythm. So uh, let's listen to the swan a little bit. So right now we have a... Uh, so um, maybe I should introduce the module a little bit. So this is six wavetable oscillators stacked on top of each other. That's the mixer section with mutes and level for each of them. And the way the module is laid out is that you have a mixer section here for your six uh, audio range wavetable oscillators. Then you have six uh, LFO that are also wavetables with individual outputs. So the section is here and they go to audio range and then you have the wavetable navigation here. So let's listen to some wavetables. Uh, if you could hold the mic just for a second, thank you.
All this is automatable with uh, the onboard LFOs. So if I want to automate the wavetable navigation, the display here uh, is color coded and tells you where each of your voices is within its wavetable, and the wavetables are uh, spherical spaces. I'm using the internal LFO to browse the wavetables. Each of the oscillator uh, is independent, so they can be in a different octave. They can also alias. You can go really high uh, up there. And get really harsh sounds if you want to. So a chorus in there. Which can then be transposed. All this is an automatable chord selection, transposition, all have CV inputs. Um, you can also uh, detune. tune with each other and then I can detune them and have them face with each other and get a fuller sound like this uh, maybe uh, there's a lot of modes and features in there uh, so the LFOs are here they have their speed controllable all the way to audio range so we can also uh, listen to the LFOs, maybe you'll hear that. So low bass, and then I can choose different waveform for the LFO. And they can alias uh, a lot, so those are harsher for sure, harsher outputs. You have six individual ones, you have CV over the uh, LFO's uh, clock speed, which allows you to get very complex um, modulation on what we heard. We're back to uh, audio range oscillators, which are, uh, of course, smoother. And maybe a mode I could show you here, too, is the key mode. So in this mode, um, each of uh, the uh, LFOs don't run in cycle. They just get triggered and become envelope generators because they're sent to the VCAs. So I can just start playing my, um, my oscillators, which right now have the same note on each of them. But I can transpose them individually. can play it like a keyboard. Uh, but one thing that's also interesting is to use an LFO. And in this mode, whenever um, a note crosses its quantization step, then it triggers the envelope generator. Um, which is what we're hearing now. I'm just using a basic LFO. And then... Um, I'm going to switch it to minor scale, minor harmonic. So I can apply the same thing to the main transpose here, and we're going to get chords. Which is kind of what, what I was using on the, on the patch earlier. Um, so that's a good way to automate music, music creation. And also, if you change your LFO shape, you get completely different results. And by changing the transposition of each voice, you change when it gets triggered, so you get different rhythms. Um, that's more in depth, but it changes where you are based on your quantization step, and so it's going to trigger at different spots. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're very awesome module, and um, looks like a very flexible module also for West Coast synthesis. Yeah, absolutely, yes. And it's. Um, it's also very useful because it's capable of working on its own. Right. You have an interface you can play. Yeah. You have six sound sources, so it's polyphonic. You also have very complex sound generation. So you can create drones, you can create sequences with it. I didn't show that, but 
DLFOs can be uh, in trigger mode and be sent to the VCA, so then you have a sequencer on board, all on board. Uh, all I've done so far was just with this one module. And with the LFOs on board, you can automate itself, so you can really be creative with a small footprint in your system. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me.